Okay, so I watched the first episode yesterday, so I'm a little late actually to watching Prehistoric Planet. Um, this week was the last week I had school, um, and I was just going to get the Apple TV um, free trial. So I decided to get it Thursday because that was my actual last day of school. So I watched the first episode at school and then took some notes at, at, over the episode. So I pretty much decided what I want to talk about in this video about the episode. Um, I still haven't watched the other four episodes though. I think they actually all came out, the last episode came out today. So I know I could have watched every episode every day. And if I didn't have school this week, I probably would have. But where I still had school, um, I just didn't do that. Um, because I kind of wanted to study for finals and stuff, so, um, that's why I'm a little late on the watching, but I'm not too late, I mean, still, the last episode just came out today, and they were doing an episode a day, so I'm probably gonna watch the second episode as soon as this one's over, so I really enjoyed the episode, uh, I believe it was titled Coast, really, really good, I loved what I saw, the first ep, um, uh, like I said, I was a little late behind, but, uh, I will be honest, this does not even feel like a dinosaur documentary, and you might be confused at why I said that, but what I mean, it, you can, it doesn't feel like something that's like CGI or like something fake. Obviously, dinosaurs are real, but you know, like whenever you're watching a documentary, sometimes you can like tell that they're not actual living animals. Like you can tell that they're something somebody's made, but the, all the dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals in this documentary, they seem real. Like they literally look like somebody just went back 60 something million years ago and was just recording it as it happened. It's so good. Um, and I'm not the biggest accuracy person, but like if I notice something horrible, inaccurate, I will say something about it. But I noticed no inaccuracies right off the bat. Um, I'm sure there might have been one or two, but nothing like horrible at least. And maybe there was no inaccuracies. I didn't see any clear inaccuracies though, so it looked really good as far as that. Um, and I will say, I think it said at the beginning of the episode something like, um, something to do with it being 66 million years ago. So I assume this means the whole documentary is the end of the Cretaceous, which would make sense because all the dinosaurs that were in the trailer and in the first episode were late Cretaceous. So that's what I'm going to assume. So kind of unfortunate that we won't see any Jurassic dinosaurs like Stegosaurus or Allosaurus, but it's good that we're expanding our view on the late Cretaceous period because, you know, a bunch of people, when they think late Cretaceous, they pretty much think of um, just a few places. They think of, um, everybody thinks of, when you think of late Cretaceous, you obviously think of North America because you got T-Rex and Triceratops. And uh, if you think South America, you're, you're probably thinking like Carnotaurus. And if you think, like, Mongolia, you're thinking Velociraptor, Tarbosaurus, Dinochirus, Therizinosaurus. But, like, some of the continents and countries, we have, like, nobody really... I mean, obviously some people know, but the public doesn't know. And that's one thing I'm so glad about. When I first saw, um, started watching it, the number one thing, I think, on Apple TV Plus was Prehistoric Planet. And I'm assuming a bunch of people got Apple TV just to watch Prehistoric Planet, but I'm glad that so many people are watching it just because it's such an eye-opening documentary where people are actually learning informational stuff about dinosaurs instead of like Jurassic Park where I think I'm gonna have a whole video about the good and bad of Jurassic Park as a series but everything about this documentary is great uh, and I will say one thing um, that I love about this you if you watch a bunch of nature documentaries or are outside and just watch animals a lot you will notice so many things with modern day animals that they just pretty much did with these. And that's exactly how it would be. Animals fill the same niches and do very similar stuff no matter what time period you're in. Like, Tyrannosaurus would probably behave very similar to a bunch of modern predators today mixed in with some, like, bird and other crocodilian or other, like, relative features. Like, it's just, you'll notice so many things if you could actually do it. Like the, um... Let me see. I've got notes, so I'm reading them as I go just to make sure I don't skip anything horrible. The first one that I loved was the Tyrannosaurus swimming and the Mosasaurus. And one thing, you might not think that there's anything similar to this in nature, but there is actually a freshwater two species that do something super similar to this. And it is um, musky, or actually largemouth bass do this too, but musky was the first one that came to mind. If you don't know what a musky is, it's a large predator predatory freshwater fish uh, 
kind of shaped like a mosasaurus. They're a really long and thin fish. Um, if you don't know what a muskie is, I would definitely recommend learning about it. They're such a cool fish. I've actually caught one. I do some fishing. Um, so they are super awesome fish. Um, and they're kind of shaped like a mosasaurus, like I was saying. They're long, thin fish. Um, and they will actually, like, follow ducks and, like, come up top water and, like, grab the ducklings. Um, and obviously, I don't do this all the time because, you know, ducklings aren't around all year long. But when they are swimming in the water and there's water that muskies are in, muskie will take ducklings. They literally make fishing lures that are shaped like ducks just because people are so aware of this happening. So... For something like this, like a Tyrannosaurus swimming, if it had chicks following it, or baby Tyrannosaurus, I guess chicks would be the right term. Um, not for sure, actually. But if a Tyrannosaurus were swimming and they had hatchlings or chicks following them, a Mosasaur would obviously take the opportunity. because, And that's one other thing. Predators, almost always, if they have a free meal, they will take the opportunity to cash in on it. Like, obviously, stuff like Archelon. I think it was Archelon, but I know it was a giant prehistoric sea turtle that's in the documentary. Mosasaurs would probably have the opportunity to take out Archelons all the time because they were going to be swimming in the water pretty much 24-7. But uh, something like Tyrannosaurs with juveniles would not be super common. So if a Mosasaur has the easy opportunity to take out a T-Rex juvenile, it was it's going to do it. And another instance in the documentary of a predator taking advantage of the opportunity is T-Rex itself swimming to eat the dead Archelon. And if, I, if it's a different prehistoric sea turtle, sorry, but... When I think of late Cretaceous large sea turtles, I'm thinking of Archelon. And it, I hope it is Archelon, because I think that's what they said it was, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, they might have not even named it as a species, but um, that was definitely the one I thought it was. So I love especially how they made Mosasaurus almost like a giant muskie and T-Rex is a giant duck or goose. Because where I do fishing and, you know, you see stuff like this and hear about it, it's just cool to see a prehistoric version of it. Um, and other, one other thing I'll mention about the T-Rex swimming, it made a ton of sense. I mean, almost any animal today that lives on land, 90% of them, I'd, I mean, I don't know the actual percentage, but almost any land animal can swim. So it makes a ton of sense that any dinosaur realistically could swim. Now, would they be great at it? No, but not every land animal today is great at swimming, but almost any can do it if they're forced to swim. Uh, and then another example of the animals doing stuff similar today was the um, the two orangisaurs acting like dolphins. They just acted so much like dolphins, st sticking together in paws, just seeming super intelligent animals. Uh, and this isn't a Lasmosaurus or a Plesiosaur. It, I know it's not Turingisaurus. This is the Papa one. Not the most accurate Plesiosaur figure, but it's one of the better ones I have. <laughs> um, but it was really cool seeing them portrayed like that. And the live birth and stuff, which I think most people believe that's what most marine reptiles did. Uh, so it was cool seeing that. Uh, and them eating rocks. I, it makes a ton of sense, though, because the animal, you know, can't have a ton of jaw power if it has if it is on such a long, thin neck. So just to swallow it and break it down its food with rocks makes a ton of sense. I don't know if that's 100% proven. I think it is. I think we have fossils that prove that they did swallow rocks, but... If not, I'm just saying it makes a ton of sense. And that's one other thing I really like. They did do a lot of speculation in this documentary. Like, um, this, I haven't seen the episode that this appears in, but I saw it in the, one of the trailers or clips was the Mononychus with the tongue. Um, that makes a ton of sense. You know, a small theropod that we know would eat bugs having a tongue that would help it catch bugs. Obviously, we don't know for a fact that that's what Mononychus had because it would a tongue fossilizing would be crazy especially from that long ago, but um, it would make a ton of sense for an animal like that to have a long tongue. So I love that they went a little speculative, but all speculative stuff that makes sense. Uh, and obviously, another episode, which I didn't watch yet, but is the, like the theropod, or I meant the theropod, the sauropod air sacs. Um, that makes a lot of sense, too, if you're going to go speculative. Um, and then the mosasaur getting cleaned by cleaner fish. That was one of my favorite scenes in the documentary. And that, I think that was real fish. I love um, that they... I, I think it was real animals that also are in this documentary, but it seems like that there's actual animals that are alive today mixed in with some of the obviously not real animals like Mosasaurus. I mean, and when I say real, you know what I mean. Obviously, Mosasaurus was a real animal, but 
the one used in the documentary is not a real, actual, living, breathing Mosasaurus. But uh, having the cleaner fish and, like, the baby sea turtles, I guess they were baby sea turtles. If they were CGI sea turtles, they were some of the best CGI or animatronic sea turtles ever. But I think they were real sea turtles, but I might be wrong. Um, and obviously the Mosasaur fight, any two top predators are going to be territorial and fight each other. So that made a ton of sense. Um, and also, one thing that I had never even thought about but was super cool was the Ammonites or Ammonites glowing. I've never even thought about the idea of ammonites glowing, but it makes so much sense. Almost all cephalopods today can either change their color or glow. Like squids, I think a bunch can glow. Octopus, I know, can change their color. Ceph or, um, what are the ones? Um, cuttlefish. Cuttlefish, I know, can glow. So it makes so much sense for ammonites to glow, and I've never seen them portrayed as glowing or never even thought of them glowing. But it makes so much sense that it wouldn't surprise me at all if they actually could glow. Uh, so that was a really cool feature that I really liked that I hadn't ever considered. Um, and I, the different ter pterosaur species was really cool. Just having so many different pterosaur species grouped together, having like one large one that would watch over and take advantage of any of the hatchlings that went too far away from its parents. Uh, I don't remember the X species, but there was a bunch of different species. It was really cool seeing all the different species, though. Uh, this is a Pteranodon, and this is a Quetzalcoatl Atlas, but I don't believe that either of those were the two species in the, this episode of the documentary, but there was a really good mix of pterosaurs, which is a really cool speculation because, you know, we know a bunch of seabirds do, do stuff similar to that, and we pterosaurs behaving similar to seabirds makes a lot of sense. And them climbing up the rock... Uh, the, the babies climbing up the rock, they seem a lot like bats, too. It was a really good combination of, of bat-like features and bird-like features that I liked on the pterosaurs. Uh, and one thing that I really loved about this documentary so far uh, was the Tyrannosaur. This is, I believe, the most accurate depiction of T-Rex we have ever seen and probably will see for a while because it's just such a great one, showing that the Tyrannosaur obviously cares for its hatchlings or its babies, or chicks. I don't know what's the best term, honestly, but I love that they portrayed it like that, and I love that how the difference of the adults and the parents look. The adults look um, scaly, um, large, without feathers, but the juveniles look, hopefully he doesn't fall on it. He's going to fall, so I'm just going to put him on his side. But having the babies be, like, feathered um, makes a ton of sense. One thing that I really hope that they end up doing later in this episode, in one of the episodes, I know there's, Tyrannosaurus is going to appear in more episodes, but I would love them to show the difference of what we assume right now, like the niche partitioning of the T-Rex, where we think the juveniles, like, you know, would hunt the smaller, faster prey, while the adults would tackle the larger herbivorous prey, like Edmontosaurus, Triceratops, and Ankylosaurus. But we think the juveniles would probably hunt, like, the, I guess, like, Ornithomimus. I don't know the exact species that was there when T-Rex was there, but, like, Ornithomimus or Struthiomimus, one of those two, I think, would be the right one, but... Something like that. That would be really cool. Uh, but I love the depiction of T-Rex. was great. Uh, and um, I'm going to give the MVP in this episode. And you might be confused about this. but Because MVP, you know, is usually the most valuable player. Usually an award given in, like, sports. But when I'm my MVP, I'm going to do this in every episode or at least do this for every episode, and it's to which dinosaur or prehistoric animal was my favorite in the episode and was, like, one of the coolest in the speed or coolest in the episode. And my MVP goes to both... It actually is a tie between Mosasaurus and T-Rex. And the reason... This is my favorite depiction of T-Rex. And I've been... I was really critical of T-Rex in one episode just because I think so many people have it as their favorite dinosaur just because they don't know a ton of dinosaurs, but... This depiction of T-Rex is my favorite so far, and it was just amazing. Um, and Mosasaurus, I think we either see two or three different species of Mosasaurus. The one that chased the two Orangisaurus, I know is a different species. Um, and I don't know if the one that attacks the T-Rex is a different species than the one that we see the the fight. And, and the one that's in the fight is also, you know, the same one that gets cleaned by the cleaner fish and shrimp. But... Um, I don't know if um, 
those are three different species or if the one that attacks the T-Rex hatchling is the same species as the one that gets clean. And I, like I mentioned, I love that scene so much. It was so cool. And I don't have a clue what they did for that. Like if it's just CGI that they had CGI fish or something, but they seem like real fish and shrimp. But um, if not, I would love to know what they used to get the fish and shrimp eat the dead skin. Maybe they used actual lizard skin or something. It was such a cool scene. Um, so yeah, Mosasaurus and T-Rex, the two MVPs, even though they kind of went at it in the episode. Uh, and I love how they portrayed Mosasaurus as the apex predator of the ocean. Because, you know, T-Rex in the ocean obviously is not the apex predator. Because he's got some... I mean, he could easily defend himself in the ocean. But Mosasaurus, I think, could definitely take out a T-Rex in the water. Uh, so that's why I think they both get the MVP. And I really love this episode. And I think this could potentially be the best documentary ever. And notice, note I didn't say dinosaur documentary. I think this is on pace already to be the best dinosaur documentary, accuracy-wise and just entertainment, enjoyment-wise. But I think this has the potential to be the best documentary. Best animal documentary, best documentary in general. Um, but definitely, I think it's going to end up being the best dinosaur documentary. But based off the first episode, I think it's on pace to be one of the best documentaries ever, if not the best. Uh, and now I'm going to go quickly a little over all the figures that I used in this video. So if you um, collect dinosaur figures and you're curious about what brands these are, this is pretty much what I'm going over. This is the Terra by Batat T-Rex. These used to be in Target stores. Um, and I think there was another ones that were like museum brand ones, but that were either Terra or Batat. But this is the one that was at Target. I don't know if they still sell them in Targets, but that's what it is. And then this is the Safari Limited Juvenile, I believe, T-Rex. Um, it's an old one that was retired a little bit ago, or not a little bit ago, a while ago. This is the mini Sketch Quetzalcoatlus that came in like one of those little like um, play sets that come with a puzzle and three other figures. Um, this is the Collective Mosasaurus, which has been in a couple videos. I love this figure so much. One of my favorite Mosasaurus. And this is probably my favorite T-Rex I have in my collection. I have a couple different Safari Limited ones. I have the Papo one, but this is probably my favorite T-Rex. Um, this is the Papo Elasmosaurus. Um, and these three are from a Groovy 2 book, which is something I, I found out a bunch of people actually don't know about. Um, it's a it's a game, a book, and figures all in one. Um, really cool. You got like 10 to 12 figures, I think. And it came with like a little playing game. Usually it's like a, a knockoff of something like either Battleship or something like that. But the game is usually, the games were usually pretty fun. Maybe I'll end up playing that game on the channel or something, but... Um, the Archelon, I believe this is just Pteranodon, or, yeah, Pteranodon, um, and then this is the Ammonite. The Ammonite's one of the really cool figures in the set, because obviously, if you're wanting to use something for a sea turtle, I mean, you're wanting to use something as an Archelon, you can obviously just put a sea turtle there, but the Ammonite, um, I think a couple brands have made Ammonites now, though, but if you're wanting this one, it's the Groovy Tube book, Gone Extinct, I believe was the name, so, really enjoyed that first episode, um, uh, and I'm going to do, I think, a separate video for each episode because obviously this video is almost 20 minutes. I didn't plan on this video being that long, but that just shows you how excited I am for this series. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll end up getting a second season. That would be crazy. I don't think we're going to get a second season because Walking with Dinosaurs, you know. Well, Walking with Dinosaurs, we kind of got a second and third season. It's just it wasn't really a second and third season. You know, it was Walking with Beast and Walking with Monsters, but... Maybe something like that will come of this. That would be awesome if we could get a prehistoric, like, beast-type version of prehistoric planet. Or more dinosaurs, just like the Jurassic period ones. That would be super awesome as well. But, um, like I said, I'm going to go over a separate video for each of these episodes. And I know they're all available right now, so I definitely recommend watching them. Uh, because this documentary is awesome. So, thank you all so much for watching. And, I, like I said, I will be uploading more videos for this series.